we are starting the first afternoon session of today. And it's uh, the panel on implementation, implementation strategies for ICT in education. I want to introduce the panelists. Maybe all of you know uh, Raymond Morel from Switzerland. He is an icon in IFIP and one of our long-lasting members <laughs> at all. Then it is uh, Davide Storti, who is uh, coming from Paris, working for UNESCO in, at there. And it is important to, to tell you that uh, IFIP has been founded under the auspices of UNESCO, and there are still long relationships and cooperation between UNESCO and IFIP. Here is uh, Stefan Lengle. He's coming from the Danube University uh, in Krems, in Austria. And Bent Andresen from Denmark, also a long-lasting member mm -hmm. of IFIP and has been in many, many of our conferences. Unfortunately, Cleopatra Nicolopoulou could not make it to come, but we have five friends on the panel. That's enough. In this session, we will discuss the situation from a global perspective, based on examples of good practice, which will be presented by the panelists. Content didactic approach means of integration into schools and influence of education on the impact of technology in our society are aspects to be discussed too. We will speak about the role and the importance of teachers in the process, and we will try to find the bottlenecks and present success stories. Uh, I would suggest to take the same format as we had yesterday. We start with introductory statements from the panelists, and then maybe half the time, and then we have uh, about three quarters of an hour for discussion. And at the end, today I say it before we start, at the end I will ask you to formulate one wish on this topic. Okay, you can think the whole uh, session, and at the end, I will ask you to formulate one wish. Because the, the results of this panel will be uh, put together in a position paper of IFIP and then will be introduced into the Austrian EU presidency, which is uh, lasting the next six months. And maybe we can have some influence if we present our ideas to the politicians. And we will also hand it over to UNESCO, and their channels are more wide, wider than uh, the EU presidency is. Okay, we will have sustainability. Our work should have an imp impact on what's going on in ICT in education. It's a very complicated topic <laughs> that you're putting in this panel. Um, so I see it in education, you know, we, it's, a, it's a matter that has been discussed for many years. And uh, um, I think uh, we've been uh, um, working uh, a lot on this subject for, uh, for a long time. So the, maybe uh, to, uh, to start, because we, this morning we had a very uh, interesting uh, work also on uh, a particular field of uh, ICTs in education, which is about uh, uh, the, the how to teach uh, concepts related to IC, so, uh, computer science, let's say, or, or uh, computational thinking, or uh, algorithms, etc. So this is one, one part, maybe this, this is where I focus more my kind of job right now. But in, in general terms, um, we, uh, uh, we've been also working a lot on mapping what are the competencies which are necessary to uh, introduce ICTs in, uh, or to use ICTs in, uh, in education. So, uh, 
since now 10 years or so, uh, UNESCO has been publishing a, a framework which is uh, uh, trying to map where teachers stand in terms of, uh, of their competencies so that uh, it's, a, it's a tool which is uh, uh, trying to guide what can be the, uh, the development uh, of, of, uh, of this course and how, how can uh, this uh, be uh, implemented, basically. So when we, I think we are still uh, in, in, a, in a moment where uh, I see this in education is still uh, not responsible became a, a, the reality, the, the promise that has been uh, given uh, for, 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 uh, for the last years, I believe. Um, I think uh, many times we still uh, uh, hope that uh, uh, the introduction of information technologies in education is uh, solving many of the problems. Uh, instead, uh, the, the problem lies with the implementation. Um, there are several attempts from digital books or digital textbooks, uh, which are panacea in some kinds of cases, because of course if you don't have uh, access to physical books, maybe access to uh, you know, digital books is, uh, is uh, what you need. So we saw the emergence of, uh, of things like uh, mobile, uh, the, text, you know, the use of mobiles for, for textbooks, mobile learning. Um, we saw, of course, that the, the, the emergence of uh, internet and distance education, which is still uh, a, a, an issue uh, in many places, and uh, is an issue where we, st we still are working uh, now today. Um, so uh, I think um, um, maybe, uh, yeah, from a general perspective, I will start this discussion, because I think this is a discussion, right? So. Uh, so say that in my point of view, uh, there is still a lot of work to be done. Uh, and uh, the, my question is, uh, we will ever reach the point where ICT is in education becomes a reality? Or, um, or uh, um, maybe should, should we, is, is this the experience proving really evidence of the uh, impact? So this is another aspect which is always been discussed. Also. What are the evidence of the impact? Are, you, are we learning better because we are using uh, some kind of ICT classrooms or, or not? So, uh, so it's a large subject, I believe. Um, and uh, I would like to, uh, I mean, I'm just trying to expose some of the uh, questions that uh, I, I have also personally. <laughs> Uh, to see if we can have a discussion and uh, based maybe on, on experiences that uh, maybe are, are brought on the table, we can try to, uh, to see where are we going in, uh, in, this, uh, in this matter. So. Thank you. Yes? Um, can you <laughs> Thank you very much for the invitation to join this panel. Uh, it's a very uh, actual and important uh, topic, uh, I think. And uh, the implementation strategies, uh, first of all, they call for reforms. Um, f we could ask the political politicians for reforms, but it, it also uh, the, it takes a word of warning because uh, reforms are needed in order to provide visions, directions, uh, etc. We know uh, after any reform, we know which way to go. But it, it, there's research evidence suggesting that any reform uh, creates a kind of a blind spot. It means that uh, people uh, on the ground, teachers, for instance, uh, they are not fully aware of what to do. 
uh, reforms often uh, leave an open question, who does wh what, when and where, uh, and therefore they are never, hardly ever, fully implemented. Then the solution from the politicians, of course, is another reform, and then another reform. But um, uh, the, I think that the politicians should be aware of this blind spot, and um, I suggest that um, they supplement development from top down, from, from upside down, uh, supplement it with the development from inside, it, which means that the schools themselves uh, make decisions, important decisions. And uh, I'll give it an, uh, an example from my country, which is Denmark. I consider uh, the implementation of ICT a success and uh, I'm a researcher, so uh, you may know that it's, it's not very often that researchers uh, indicate that something is a, a success. We are often very critical, but <laughs> I, I consider uh, the implementation of ICT a, a success. Uh, almost overnight, the politicians decided to have one-to-one uh, -one classrooms based on the bring-your-own-device principle. And within a couple of years, all schools in Denmark, from K to 12, all classes everywhere in the country, they have one-to-one -one classrooms. And as a matter of fact, it's more two-to-one classrooms because each student has a, 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 a tablet or a laptop and a mobile phone. Uh, and. Uh, the schools uh, provide some tablets or, or laptops for those students who are not able to bring their own, so, so nobody is left uh, behind. Uh, within uh, those years, uh, the, uh, the, the digital literacy of the students uh, has been measured uh, several times because Denmark participate in international comparative investigations. And uh, that's one uh, of these uh, investigations at grade four uh, regarding navigation on web pages and uh, reading web content. The two uh, top countries is Denmark and another. Uh, and, and there's another uh, international comparative study regarding what's called computer and information literacy. Both computer and information literacy are covered. And I don't want to go into detail, but again, ar around the top three countries out of 40 is Denmark. Uh, the students, I should say, are from Denmark. So uh, we really do well uh, uh, regarding uh, this kind of literacy. I, I uh, strongly believe that it has to do with uh, the development from inside. The schools had to find the solution. Every kid has uh, his or her device. What are we going to do with it? Uh, we, we have to, it has to make sense, and they found uh, good solutions, really. And uh, uh, what are the schools doing? Uh, well. Um, I would say that uh, they focus on, on the functionality as well as the uh, use of, of ICT. Uh, and, and the uh, learning objectives are realistic. Uh, each subject has uh, its own learning objectives related to ICT. Just to give you an example or an idea, in math, the students are going to use uh, spreadsheets and CAS systems. And, uh, and the schools are told to, to do that. Uh, uh, and in that way, students learn about uh, those uh, systems and, and it's the same all over in, in, in all subjects. Um, the, 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 the progress is, is tailored to, to the current learning needs of the students. And, uh, and uh, they, the schools are, 
are very flexible in the way they organize it. Um, we, we don't uh, have uh, informatics, uh, and, and one reason is that we don't have the teachers that can teach it. We are going to get it in the future, but uh, I and others say, say to the uh, government, uh, teacher development, as you, you mentioned before, is, is very, very important. Otherwise, it's not going to be a success. It may even demotivate uh, students if the teacher uh, is unprepared uh, in this area. <clears throat> so, um, years ago, many years ago, we, we talked about filling the gaps of K-12 students. It's hardly an issue anymore. Um, and uh, now we'll see what the future will, uh, will bring concerning uh, informatics or, uh, or coding. Uh, the, the, the terminology is rather unclear in Denmark. We call it technology, uh, technology understanding. Um, Next August, I'm going uh, to a meeting in the ministry to advise them what, what, can, what can this label contain. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here at this meeting. I, le I learn a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. So we are moving from global point of view, national point of view, uh, to, to the actors of uh, the, the whole process, which are the projects, and uh, Stefan will uh, present. It is an international uh, project and has some ideas which could be an example out of the whole of the bunch of pro projects we have. Hello, everyone. Um, I will today show a project of my university that I'm currently working on. Uh, I'm Stefan Lengle from the Danube University Krems of the Department of Interactive Media and Educational Technologies. Uh, we work in the uh, planet learning part and with uh, educational technologies. And here you can see some master course and certified programs of our department if you're interested in and some of our projects. So I will today present the project TVET. Uh, it's called Developing Teacher Competences for a Comprehensive VET System in Albania. So it's about uh, uh, improving the further education uh, courses in Albania that they are offered. So in 2014, the Albania Ministry of Education published a paper about uh, the further education and how they want to improve the, the courses. And in this process, they, uh, they got the Erasmus Plus project, came out of that, and that's what I'm currently working on. So that project started uh, last year, November. Uh, it takes about three years, so it, we are quite at the beginning, more or less, uh, still. Um, and the, the main focus of the project is to, to develop uh, 16 training courses during the project, together with the Albanian partners and European partners, to to get high quality courses and to give them the tools so they can establish high quality courses also after the project ends. Uh, here you can see our uh, partners. Uh, we have eight Albanian universities that are working in the project. The Ministry of Education in Albania, uh, one university in Spain, the University of Leon, uh, University of Turku in Finland and my universities. So we are all working together to get all our knowledge together to establish these courses. Um, what have happened so far in the project? Uh, so far we, we made a, a needs analysis of the teachers and the university staff in Albania. So we developed a questionnaire to find out what the Albanian teachers uh, already have for no knowledge, what they want, uh, what for education courses they need. Um, yeah, and, and the Danube University Krems is uh, kind of an advisor in this uh, project and the course design, uh, especially with focus on blended learning implementation these courses. So I will show here some findings of the needs analysis we made. Um, these findings are not uh, uh, ready. Uh, the, 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 the full end report isn't finished yet, so this is just a roughly uh, 
what's came out. Um, so the majority of the teachers uh, that uh, answered the questionnaire said that they believe that more training is necessary all in all, that there's a need for professional competences and roughly about 50% 50, 50 said that they need better ICT competences and they want uh, to get new teaching methods, especially for their teaching subjects. That was an important issue for them. And how do they want to get the training? So they think that LLL as a lifelong learning is a great opportunity to benefit from higher education, but that the uh, lifelong learning culture at the schools ha is uh, quite often not really good, so that the uh, uh, rector or something like that doesn't really appreciate if, if, if teachers make uh, further education courses, something like that. And they, they said that they most uh, want blended learning scenarios uh, uh, implemented in their teaching courses, but still uh, the most important things had to be face-to-face. -face. Um, what was also very interesting is how the technical infrastructure the schools are. We also asked the teachers what they have. So uh, almost all teachers said that they have smartphones, uh, so, uh, but, but uh, more, much more than they said they have a computer or laptop. So we, we thought this was interesting because then we can maybe use this uh, uh, more, uh, so they more use cell phones or then, then laptops or something like for, for an education course or something. Uh, they use uh, the most used network, social network is uh, Facebook to, because we want to improve the communication uh, between the uh, different teachers and things. Uh, and uh, they all said that the infrastructure needs to, needs to be improved because uh, 50 to 60 percent of the schools don't have any access to internet uh, at all that uh, participated. And they said that they don't use uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, software in the universities or programs, but when they use it's always uh, mostly free products or third party products like Google Forms or Google Classroom. Um, so what are the desires of the teachers? Uh, many teachers would like to get more ni uh, guidance uh, to find the training courses. This is especially important for the Ministry of Education, how to improve that. Uh, they want to more network more together, uh, so more exchange uh, between different teachers and uh, staff is possible. And they want stronger support of the headmasters of the institutions. Uh, higher salaries are desired. And uh, many teachers want to learn more about the lifelong learning in Europe and in the EU. And uh, what one really important uh, issue was for everyone that the local context of the training is always important. That the uh, that uh, everything that is uh, that they learn can really use in their school, in their uh, environment. Uh, what else happened in the project? So until now, we have uh, developed uh, 16 training courses. The topics, what what uh, what we will develop during the next months, uh, through many feedback rounds, we de we decided how to uh, which which are the most relevant topics for the schools in Albania and which ones we want to implement. Uh, we made also learning visits where the Albanian universities, uh, the staff came to Austria and to Finland and we showed them good practices of work and how we implement for the education courses and so on. Here you can see the training courses that we decided on, uh, just roughly to see them. If, and I want to shortly uh, end my presentations with the big challenges of the project. So one of the big challenges is uh, we want to uh, imp uh, implement uh, some blended learning scenarios in the uh, for the education courses, but uh, they don't have that at, or at the moment at all. Uh, at the moment it's all face-to-face, -face, so there's a lot of uh, uh, pushing back uh, that to implement uh, things like that. It's partly because they don't have the equipment, uh, but also because I think they're not so familiar with these things. And also using technology in the teaching itself is not quite common yet. And we want to implement, uh, we would like to implement Moodle uh, during the project, so they have a learning platform where they can uh, use that. Uh, they don't have uh, something like that at the moment. 
and what's really uh, uh, difficult is also always the sustainable improvement that also after the project we really have uh, give, give all, the, all the participants and all the universities the tools so they can improve their work further on and exchange. Uh, if you're interested here, here's the websites and uh, contact information. Thanks. Thank you, Stefan. I think it's a good example of international cooperation and international cooperation and a global view is one of the key points of success in integration of ICT and the strategies to therefore. Uh, next uh, is uh, Rainbow Morel. You summarize. I have in front of me a report between the 12th and the uh, 21st of April 1989, okay? Uh, it was at that time a huge conference organized by UNESCO under the title ICT and Education. And uh, here I fixed the last four pages. It was pages with recommendation, 15 recommendations. You can apply today. No problem. It's still valid. You hear lifelong learning, lifelong learning already 29 years ago. <laughs> okay, we saw that already. You have uh, not the MOOC, because the MOOC at that time was not. But uh, what you see that during 29, years, you just look the evolution of the technology and the pedagogy is still <laughs> static on the station, okay? And I think we should really break this devil cycle, otherwise we continue to do some new recommendations that you are not able to implement and in 10 years we will be at the same point. So, I have here a sheet of paper. If you do uh, circulate your email, I will send you that and the report with that. It's not the truth. It's not the magic uh, sheet of paper to solve all the problem. But I think it comes from the Institute of the Future, okay? And you have a, a view with, uh, they said there are, and the title is Future Work Skills 2020. Ah, in two years, <laughs> okay? Or you can change and put 2030 maybe to be a bit uh, more realistic. But uh, they, they do the two things. First, they said, what are the tendency nowadays? And you can't avoid it, okay? So there are six tendency. It's a eclat, the dispatch uh, with uh, six different color, okay? I don't read it and don't discuss it. It's just the, the, the thinking behind that, okay? And then you have 10 points which are for them, Institute of the Future, okay? But you can uh, see other paper, there's only seven or 12, uh, it doesn't matter, I think. But uh, you have 10 competency to be able to work in 2020, okay? If you disagree with that, you can put off one tendency, one trend, and replaced by another one, or two, three other one, because you observe different things in the, your country, okay? The same thing with, uh, with uh, competency, but what you can see uh, uh, only on this map, that the competency are not labeled <laughs> like in your curriculum. It's meta-competencies. And you can put in action with the old curriculum because uh, 
creativity, you can do that with geography, with uh, mathematics, with languages. You don't need uh, to create the new creativity, creativity teacher to teach creativity. It's not that, okay? And for all the 10 competence, you have a description. It's a, there, are, there is an article with uh, 14 pages. Just to say a, a, a brief joke, I say that in Zurich uh, with colleagues, and uh, I say, oh, send me uh, the, to the map and the 14 pages. I was in the train. I begin to write a message, dear Simon, here is the two document and so on. And before the, the end of, the, of that, before the end of that, you know what? Google said, maybe they are missing two documents. Because Google and the automata of Google are not knowing that behind a link you can have document. You see? And all your, uh, your messages are already read before you put return to send them. Okay? So I can also uh, send you these uh, two documents. Don't take it as something uh, a golden rule or the solution or and so on. But I think you can just take one of these 500 different papers. But I have actually 500 papers on, the, <laughs> on the competency for the future. I just select one, OK? But you can discuss it to say, by us, that is not correct. We will change and do that this way. But the, I think the fact to put your reflection not to see if your teacher will be able to teach tomorrow or next year, I don't know what, okay? But uh, in a global way to see what are the tendencies you can't avoid and what are the competencies that your pupils today are, have to, 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 to develop to be able to work during 45 years, <laughs> okay? Otherwise, uh, the first new things are coming, uh, they are out, okay? And that is maybe the most difficult thing today for teachers because they, have, they, are, they, they were educated by the previous generation. They have the pretension to, to, to prepare the next generation, but they don't know what will happen. That is a bit strange, okay? to prepare people when you don't know what will happen, okay? So it's certainly not the competency of today that you need to solve the problem in 2022, 20, 2027, 2031, 20, and so on, because the, 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 the people in the system nowadays, they have some risk to have the necessity to work till uh, 2060 or 2065. And I can assure you that uh, what they are learning today is completely out of order to uh, be able to go through, okay? So you should begin to think, to change a bit the paradigm in, in our head and I think the, 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 the Institute of Your Future saying, what are the tendencies today? Not to, to adopt them, but uh, just to be conscious, okay? And what are the competencies necessary to go five years, 10 years, 15 years, and so on? And you will join again uh, notion like uh, lifelong learning and things like that, of course. But we already say that 29 years ago, okay? Please be acting. I will be more uh, proactive after uh, in the second round uh, to propose something very uh, useful and uh, efficient for the future. Thank you, Raymond. I could it make it very easy for me to say Okay, everything important aspect, every important aspect has been mentioned. But uh, maybe before we start the discussion now and the, the, uh, the question and answer uh, part of this uh, session, maybe some ideas. First, I think there is no, not one implementation strategy. 
we should always keep in mind that there are dependencies. Dependencies uh, on culture. We have here, uh, I see delegates from <coughs> at least three continents. Yeah, maybe India, Botswana, Morocco, <laughs> Europe. Yeah, we have, uh, and the, there's a dependency on the culture of the country because education reflects the society. And so we have uh, different cultures of, in the society as well in the education. The, I can give an example. We have had a conference in Stellenbosch in, in South Africa and my, my mouse was broken and I wanted to buy a new mouse and I was walking during lunchtime through the city and I could not find any computer shop. And uh, there were, I, I was counting, 11 mobile phone shops on my way. So I asked the people from the Ministry of uh, Education in you know, Johannesburg, why are there no computer shops? And they, she said, no, you should know. Africa has an oral culture. We do not like to write on a computer, we like to phone. And the, the media reflects the culture of a country. And uh, yeah, it depends on, on how the community uh, sees itself and how the person is seen within the community. And it depends, the implementation strategy it, it depends on the economic situation. We have here in the audience uh, and on the panel uh, people from different uh, uh, from countries with a, a different uh, economic level. But it's not always the budget. We have I've seen so good didactic examples from Africa, uh, from schools in rural areas in Africa, and they were very good and very informative. And it depends on the school system. Even if we compare uh, Denmark or Finland with Austria, we, uh, the countries are on the same uh, economic level, but uh, how the school system works is very different. ICT must embed it in the national school system and its tradition. And we have different forms of orientation. I think we should start from the needs of the students. Our project should be integrative. That means not only to integrate uh, disabled students or migrant students, yeah, it, it must integrate, like we heard this morning, arts, technology, society, psychology, didactics, to one global strategy. And I think very important is that projects uh, are done should be scalable. Otherwise, the project may be of scientific interest, but if it's not scalable, it will not have an effect in school. And three properties, which I uh, want to stress at the end of my uh, talk, this is openness, optimism, and balance. Openness towards new technology, openness to a global approach, to new didactic uh, aspects, to the age of the person, ICT education must start in kindergarten and last till, yeah, till my age, well, that's the end of course. Uh, the, the oldest participant in one of my courses was 85 years old. Yeah. And uh, also uh, openness toward reforms. Optimism, I was so happy in this morning because uh, Gerhard Stocker, yeah, he showed optimism to the future. And uh, not what we sometimes have, especially in Austria, maybe in Germany, is this pessimistic view to the future. And it must balance. Balance between bottom-up uh, strategies and top-down strategies. Balance between technology-oriented projects or strategies and non-technology-oriented modern strategies or more traditional, I think we should find the right balance. Then we will be successful. Thank you.
thank you for sharing um, processes that have, you know, that have been taking place in in the uh, name of uh, ICT infusion integration in the schools, and um, when if, I don't know whether some methods have been put through and 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 and, and reforms, um, and maybe. I think the same thing is happening also in our own context in Africa. We have had reforms um, and policy, maybe at the strategic level, where you know policy was really. Uh, we have, for example, in Botswana, we have a policy called Maitamo. Maitamo means commitment. So, in other words, Botswana is committed. Maitamo ICT policy, and it has got. Uh, an aspect that goes to to the schools, and we call it tutonet. Tuto means education, so it's it's a maitamo policy. That means we are committed, but we are trying to infuse it into education. But nevertheless, there are so many other problems associated with the with all this. Um, that's why yesterday there was scalability and. And, and sustainability, those issues have come up during the conference. And it's quite interesting, but we, we are doing something in Botswana also, but it's not sustainable, it's, it's not scalable it, to, to, to significant levels, so much that I, one might wonder, what, what, where are we going wrong, even in the Western world? where things have been happening for a long time, we, we don't seem to see uh, much change which could be emulated, really. Uh, I'm just wondering whether really has there been assessments and, and, and research? We are presenting a lot of papers here at this conference, but why no sustainability? I think it's a question that uh, I think uh, moral hinted it yesterday that maybe the, there is no sustainability, but the question maybe should be, could be, where are we, we are supposed to be educators, and edu educators are very systematic in implementing things, but then wh where are the problems, where, what are we doing wrong, maybe it's the big question. Thank you. I like to be positive now, okay? You are... You are you are plenty of question, okay? And you say maybe I do things wrong and so on and so on. Okay? I will tell you a true story. It was in ninety four and you have the beginning of the packages. You have a, a pedagogical program to learn biology or to learn a language or to physics or a phenomena of physics or things like that. Okay, and at that time we have difficulty to go that, with that through the teacher and say, please uh, use that. Uh, you can you you can't explain the speed to put a satellite. You have no a ramp to, or to give a very big shock, and then you know it's ten something uh, met by, by second. You, you should give a, in kilometers by second, and you you don't have that. Uh, you have no laboratory to put a satellite. Okay, but you have the this concept is in the, the physics. The same thing with in biology or in chemistry, you have some uh, phenomena that are dangerous, too, too quick, too slow, and so on and so on, okay? At that time, we had this uh, difficulty. And we do an operation called success story, okay? And success story, it's easy. It's not a dream, it's a reality. If you have done something quite nice, you are proud of, and there are many uh, teachers who are innovators uh, with plenty of ideas and things like that, doing some marvelous things, okay? Then you just uh, put 
uh, your uh, fact in some rubric. There was 12 rubric, 12 items. Uh, I don't say the, the fact that you have the name, the address, uh, the email, and so on and so on. But if you have some pedagogical aspect behind your very nice success story, okay, write it in a box called pedagogical aspect. Teaching aspect, learning aspect, cultural aspect, social aspect, technical aspect, logical aspect, institutional aspect, complementary remark. Okay? And this sheet of paper, it was the case in 94, okay, was put on the web, okay? And I have colleagues very, very, very smart. The Japanese colleague at that time said, I agree with you. I will provide you a description for primary school, for low secondary, for upper secondary, and for vocational training, okay, in different uh, disciplines. We have, he gave me a 45 entry, okay, some are only with two or three and so on, but in many uh, countries. That was the first step of the Operation Success Story. Then we have a second, and the third step was for the WCCE 95 in Birmingham, and we have an English version of that, and a booklet, and a database, and all the things at that time. Not a MOOC, of course, at that time. And uh, it was very useful to push the people to be part of a very nice, innovative process. Why not to do the same thing <laughs> yeah. with your actual problem? You can take the same grid, just to phrase differently, it's not for usage of pedagogical packages, but it's for implementing <laughs> strategy in different uh, local uh, or at the state level or international. And I think if we are doing this kind of uh, process, we will certainly have uh, more and more people say, oh, you do that this way in Botswana. We are doing that in a different way, but it's complementary. We can improve our way and you can, and so on and so on, okay? And I think if we can push such uh, process, the only thing, it's not dream, it's reality. That is, if you describe something, it's something happened, not in 10 years I will do that, okay? Thank you. Um, uh, so thanks, for, very interesting. I think, I mean, uh, from what has been said, I, I would say, um, was a very good question from Paul. Uh, <laughs> what what was what we did we do wrong? What was not right or whatever? So that's an interesting question because at the end of the day, uh, I think the problem is exactly this. When we talk about ICT in education, is maybe uh, the wrong approach because basically we are assuming that education is uh, something which is not moving. And we are trying to in inject something into something which is already there. And this is why we, uh, before I was very quickly going through uh, some of the issues, etc. So that's, I think, the major problem. And uh, it's a bit surprising. I'm not an educator, I'm from, more from computer <laughs> science. But uh, uh, I think this is, uh, I think, part of the problem. When you see that there are different methods, different pedagogies, etc., which are, you know, very, uh, no, now old, yes, even uh, a different approach in the classrooms and how uh, how uh, how the, the, the for example the, the role of the teacher versus the role of the students. It's uh, you know there are the flipped flipped classrooms. There are a number of experiments now, and for the last many years, by the way. And I think this is the, actually the, the problem. So when we, when we keep continuing to talking about uh, implementing something in something which is not uh, um, movable, that's, that's a, a, a challenge. And then you see problems like uh, bring your own device uh, kind of uh, uh, things that some people are, 
uh, doing it, but then uh, we heard that uh, basically schools were left to their own, uh, let's say, imaginations to, to uh, use these devices, vice versa. Uh, again, this morning we were mentioning some countries where schools are forbidden for using uh, uh, mobile phones, etc. Um, things about uh, um, so what what is needed is uh, we talk we talk about the blended learning. Uh, uh, we we heard about uh, can you teach creativity? No, we don't, maybe you cannot teach creativity, but you can enable creativity, which is a very different uh, concept. So what we um, I think the message is uh, uh, you need an educational innovation. I think was maybe in one of the slides, uh, because that, that's, that's the point. So maybe you then need to re rethink education. This is what also what UNESCO has been uh, now finally uh, doing. Uh, there are, there's a process which has been started uh, uh, last, last year uh, about this uh, rethinking of education, exactly for looking at uh, these issues and uh, analyzing what is really wrong, because something is definitely not uh, any more valid because we are not in the same world. Before education was for the few people, uh, then uh, it moved uh, uh, progressively to the masses, and now we are again in uh, another shift, which is uh, maybe uh, thanks to uh, the knowledge, but thanks to also technology, maybe also it's maybe uh, going to uh, maybe personalized uh, kind of uh, uh, education, because we can aim of a life, life learning, lifelong learning pattern personalized because I want to know some things and not the others. So this is a, an, an evolution. So when I think this is a major problem for me, at least when we talk uh, since the 40, 50 years about ICT in education. It's a wrong ap approach. Uh, in, uh, we're trying to, to uh, adapt uh, uh, the, the, it's like a, if I put some wheels in my feet, maybe I will run faster. <laughs> I don't know. Anton, uh, I, I like to say, to, no, no. I, I like to say to Paul, and when I say to Paul, I know Paul, so I can send, say something very strong with him, but I can do that for everybody in the room. Don't be ashamed. You have value, you know your country, and you do things in your country. It's only by comparison with others afterwards you will see, ah, I can also do that this way, or I can improve that. I had some difficulties there, and so on, okay? So be natural. Keep you are from Botswana and not from Oslo, okay? So you have the condition of Botswana. And if you have done nice things, you just describe what you have done. Okay. Yes, um, um, when you uh, implement uh, ICT in, in, in education, um, it can be compared uh, with a travel. Uh, and uh, when you travel, you go from, from um, one destination to another. And in the meantime, you evaluate, uh, are we or are, uh, are uh, I, 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 um, I, <laughs> am I approaching the, the, the destination? And, and it's very, very important, any change, to, to set up some rather clear goals or objectives or visions, uh, and then to evaluate, are we, we approaching the goals? As long as you do that, nothing can go really wrong because you can adjust the course in between, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, I don't have time now, but we have some in examples in the research literature uh, concerning school systems that, that failed to evaluate, and, and um, for many years they kept going in the wrong direction, so to speak, and if just they had evaluated, they, they, it wouldn't have, have happened. Thank you. I'm looking for more contributions from the audience, yeah. I just had a comment uh, 
looking at implementation problems in ICT, in education, even in India and other developing countries, it seems the issues and challenges come to a point where we see a lot of commonalities. So there are a lot of common problems, for example, uh, doing blended learning for teacher professional development, everything goes fine when it's face to face, but then transition from face to face into online is where the problem starts because then the attendance starts staggering, you know, so there are similar problems. But when we basically interview teachers and ask them what really are your challenges, I think in India they keep talking about uh, its infrastructure, poor infrastructure. But so I'm just thinking since the problems and challenges are the same, uh, teachers still tend to give, uh, use the external, the first, uh, the first layer of uh, problems, which is infrastructure or poor connectivity, which you don't see in developed countries, but still the challenges are the same. Uh, secondly, I wanted to, um, I'm digging more into this issue of how scalability leads to sustainability. And um, it's more to do with the concept of scalability because I've seen that scalability just in terms of increasing number and spreading horizontal and vertically may not necessarily lead to sustainability if, if the intervention is not systemic integration into the current system. So even if, like for example for us, moving from 50 to 600 schools, if the funder withdraws or the university withdraws, it will still fall flat because it has not systemically integrated into assessment and curriculum. So I was just trying to understand this concept more that scalability number not necessarily may give sustainability. There is more to the concept of scalability. I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if we can present some slides. No. Just, okay, good. So, uh, thank you first for sharing, for inviting us. Uh, I, I will come back to some, uh, some ideas, some initiatives. I come from Marrakesh University from Morocco. So, the university has just 35 years, it's a young one. But the, the problem, we moved from 2010 to now, from 30,000 students to 105,000, which is too much. So I like the idea of we need to, 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 to look, to check what is the need for the student. The need for the student in Morocco, Africa, North Africa, Botswana, whatever, everywhere in Africa is massification, which we call the, na the name is in English, but massification is having big, big and big number of students every year. And every year we are getting 12% every year. So next year, will be around, for sure, 122,000 students. So what we have to do? We cannot build, we cannot make amphitheaters. It's too expensive. The idea is to, to create something, is to innovate. To innovate is to innovate using ICT, of course. So this is what we tried to do five years ago. We started at 2013 asking people to come and to record their lessons, a tutorial, lab activity, whatever, everything we put online. And we call the project UCA, which is Yuka MOOC. We took the MOOC because of the name of the noun of the MOOC. And it's now, if you go to Google, you will put MOOC. It will be from the 10 first one that they appear. Because we use on that name, but it has nothing with the MOOC. It's a low-cost MOOC. All people are working as volunteers. We don't pay them. And we have something like 150 full modules. And you can check. And we get more than 7 million people and more than 35,000 people connected and registered and they came back. So it helps students because we cannot uh, have a, some times class of more and over that 700 students. So we we are in the, because this is part of the answer. Of course, we are not offering courses like this. We offer courses because we write a script, we make scenarization, 
before posting, we adopt pedagogy. Sometimes it's flipped classroom. Other times it's also blended classroom. So sometimes it's 30% online and 70. Some uh, others adopt uh, other uh, other percentage. But in this case, we find that the people uh, connected, I mean the young people connected, our student got very, very nice results. So this is the project we are now offering to the High Council of Education and it will be adopted for sure for the next year. For, and this is only one. I am not talking about some Erasmus. We have an open uh, open post, we have something like uh, Open Med project, which is an international uh, Erasmus Plus. We are in the last year. We create this project, but on uh, open and online. We open. The, the, this, the, this is the, the last point of my uh, point: is to make something. If we have to do some some ICT project, we have to make it open to people. Well, I'm talking because I'm coming from public university, we are not private. Of course, we have 12 public universities, but maybe uh, 15 uh, other private. Make it open, help others to follow what you are doing, and it's like uh, also a visibility for the institution. Make it open, help other teachers, help other students to take benefits from that. So we moved this project this year with UNIMED in Roma, which is the coordinator, in an open uh, platform. We use uh, Sakai platform, we have uh, also Open edX platform, and it's open for everybody. So you can have uh, just an idea, get connected there. Okay, thank you. So thank, thank you. Uh, Stefan, what, what is the experience from this project concerning uh, collaborative, international cooperation in, in teacher training? Are the needs the same in the countries? Um, I think uh, it's qu quite similar from the, what the Albanians need, what I heard from you, that the, they, have, they also complain a lot about the infrastructure, that they, don't, isn't, isn't, that they want to improve there a lot, and, and the technology they have just a little, and we, 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 we try to give them uh, uh, ideas how they can use, uh, what they can do with little infrastructure, but it's also challenging for us because we also don't know exactly, it's, it's a quite a long process for us to, to try to figure out something that we can work together and to help them in a way. Or we, we, we try to give them more ideas what they can do and how, what causes they can, we can do and how they can implement it. And, uh, they have to do then all the work and have to uh, work further on on that. I think that this project that I have is just a start and hope they they can work on with that, yeah. I mean, uh, what is your experience in, are they, the, is the situation very different in different areas of the world, or do we have common uh, problems or common challenges? Oh, in terms of teacher profession, in, oh, of yeah, strategies in general. Yeah, in general, I think ICT implementation, or, I mean, since, in the, in the country like India, it's more diverse. So you see a lot of uh, sections in the society. So what goes in the lowest rung may not be true in the other uh, social economic status. So there is a huge divide. But uh, I'm seeing over the years, uh, whether you see very elite schools or very uh, marginalized, where the marginalized uh, uh, students come from, uh, still, the trend is not so much about you uh, giving technology in the hands of students uh, to create something. It's always in a responsive mode. If if you see even uh, across the socio-economic status, and the whole buzz that I'll be also talking about tomorrow is about creating more and more content <laughs> and making it available and. Uh, in that sense, let's make content, more and more content in local languages because it's not available. So that's again a big buzzword that we have to make it more accessible to more. That's fine, but uh, still it's seen as in a very responsive mode that you give content and using teachers as pipes to deliver that content. So. I always think that from blackboard to smartboard and you know from 
books to e-content, but if the pedagogy and the learning is not changing in the classroom, then I think there's a bigger issue that everyone should think. And it's very difficult, like, you know, to explain these concepts to bureaucrats and uh, politicians. So we are actually seriously thinking of, because we, we are in the process of developing so many certificate courses, we are seriously thinking of capacity building of bureaucrats and politicians <laughs> in some way. <laughs> So do we agree? That's my wish. <laughs> do we agree that the common problem are the politicians? <laughs> no. Hmm. One more contributions, questions, comments. Right. Yeah, just just following on um, from what you were saying here, I've just kind of been writing some notes as, as you've been talking, and you know. It, it, it makes me think, and I know particularly speaking from an Australian perspective um, and from our own policy background, uh, what's happening in Australia at the moment is this back to basics uh, rhetoric. So it's about you know making sure all children can read and write. And I think what's actually happening is it's killing the creativity. And so teachers are not having any opportunities to use ICT creatively because it's so data driven. It's about can you measure their progress in terms of their learning. And because at the moment, um, particularly in Australia, there is no measurement for creativity. And so I wonder, you know, what, what would happen if we opened up spaces to actually let teachers and students fail at technology? Because at the moment, you know, it, it speaks to what is the purpose of education. And I think that's what it comes down to. There's, there's all of this rhetoric out in the public about, you know, the demonisation of, of technology with, you know, addiction and everything that's going on around that. And I wonder how that is then affecting our teachers' attitudes in our schools towards technology. I mean, we have the American Paediatric Society saying that students should only be using screens for a certain amount of time. And so there's all of this feedback then from parents going into school systems saying, well, how much are you using uh, digital technology? So, uh, you know, I, I don't know if there's a question in any of this, but I think it's, it's so complex and that I worry about scalability because we're dealing with complex systems from school to school, from class to class, from student to student. And so I agree, it needs to be organic. I think it needs to be coming up from the schools in some, in some way, but politicians, policy, allowing schools to actually have the freedom to, to play and be creative with this, and really see what pedagogies can actually come out of this type of work rather than trying to innovate something into quite a traditional style of pedagogy. So, um, you know, my, I suppose my, my question is, um, you know, can it actually be added in, can ICT actually be added into the existing technology, into the existing system? Or is it more a case of as we need that particular tool, it gets added in? So is it more about um, learning in, you know, on-demand learning? So it's not about something being forced upon someone. You need to be able to use this. It's about, I want to do this task. What tools can I actually use? So I, I don't know if any of that makes sense. Maybe reframing it. Anyway, uh, that's my thoughts. <laughs> thank you. OK. Maybe just, just to add on, uh, on what uh, colleagues have been saying. You know, in our own context, we, we were thinking that maybe uh, the problem is it's that um, it's not it's not a curriculum subject. It's it's an add-on. It's a kind of a transcendental kind of arrangement whereby you are giving people an extra skill from primary up to junior secondary. It's just an awareness kind of thing. You you are just giving them an awareness on how to um, to use um, IT. But it's not a curriculum subject. It's not, it's not taught like maybe in the developed world. So we were thinking that maybe that's the problem with us because we have not gotten to the stage of integrating it to become a teaching subject, I mean a curriculum subject, so that teachers have not been trained specifically to do that at primary and secondary. And maybe they start too late at at, at uh, senior secondary, that's where you have computer 
science as a subject. So I think it's related to um, what colleagues were saying, but um, doing something as an add on, maybe students don't like maths, but because it's a curriculum subject, they have to do it. Maybe students don't like English, but because it's a curriculum subject, they have to do it. But then we were thinking, and then also the resources, like uh, when it comes to a secondary school where they have to do um, um, awareness and, and also do it as a subject. You find now that those who are doing it as a subject now, they cling on to the resources and they don't allow. So the computer awareness aspect falls off because the resources cannot provide for both in, in the school. Thank you. David. Um, well, I, th I think, um, yeah, above all that, there is this, also this, this question on, on these uh, uh, skills uh, versus uh, education, let's say. There's a huge uh, debate. Uh, uh, it's different levels uh, in terms of uh, there is a huge push for skills, and uh, as uh, we've been discussing this morning as well, uh, uh, because uh, um, maybe there is some misunderstanding. Of, uh, the question is, what is the purpose of education? It's I think <laughs> maybe uh, at the end of the day uh, the, the question <laughs> of behind all this. Um, and uh, and the, the effect of uh, uh, I mean ICT as a, as a complementary uh, sort of uh, subject is uh, is again uh, going on this. So I think uh, that that's a that's a huge uh, uh, misunderstanding. I believe uh, if we uh, talking about, uh, for example, this was this morning we were discussing about exactly uh, computer science and. Uh, it was one contribution from uh, from Germany uh, saying that uh, uh, com they are struggling in computer science and uh, um, teaching. If I find it here, maybe I can. Uh, because um, uh, basically uh, there are there are, uh, there are many thousands of students uh, in uh, learning computer science, but. Uh, but uh, really, they don't know how they do it, and most of them are learning basic things, etc., like drawing, uh, these kind of things. Um, so uh, there is a th there is an ongoing discussion about this. They don't really know where they where they are at, apparently. On the other side, I'm working with Germany with uh, in projects which are uh, providing young people with skills in some skills in computer science, like programming, for example, because they want to help developing countries to cope with this uh, uh, economy, you know, market-driven demand of jobs in the short-term period. So the same country, so East, I'm working with the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, it's quite interesting, uh, on, on skills development in developing countries, when you see there is a huge problem in uh, in implementing computer science as a subject in, in the Ministry of Education, I guess. So it's, <laughs> it's quite uh, interesting. Like, uh, oh. so. Where is the micro? Is there? If, Paul, you like to use only ICT and not to teach ICT, it's your, it's your problem in Botswana. If you like to do in another way around in another country, it's their problem. But both are very valuable, I think. I, I, will, I like metaphor. I create metaphor. If I give you the problems, the following problem, you have a, a pond with some lily water. And I ask you to cover the pond. You have at least two possibilities. One is to cut the lily water and to put them this way on the pond. And very rapidly, you have the pond is covered. Okay? 
but in 24 hours it is not very nice because it is a uh, finish okay if you like to do that in a sustainable way maybe it would be better to take some a network of lily water to connect to others and so on, it will take more time, but you are sure at the end it's full and with sustainability. Okay? So maybe in your problem, in our problem, we should understand that it will take some time if we like to be sustainable and to reach the target at the end. And for that, I have another uh, metaphor. It's uh, with the elastic. If you like to go from here to there, okay, you can do that. If you are not, if you are too much impatient, you will crash here, and the elastic will never be repaired. So you have sometimes to wait a bit, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you understand? And uh, plenty of metaphor of this type are very useful to take the right decision and to be not too much uh, impassioned. I look here about the success story in the beginning of the, the 90s. We uh, beg be began in Barcelona in 93 with uh, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Great Britain, Israel, Italy, Japan, Malaysia, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Switzerland, and USA. Okay? 18 countries. They were in Barcelona for a working conference like here, and they agreed to produce at least three descriptions of success stories in their country. Okay? The Japanese uh, provide 45. Okay? But they are very very speedy. And uh, it was the beginning of uh, putting lily water on the, on the pond, you see. And uh, really, at the end, uh, two years after, we have a full collection of practice with packages for pedagogical use in different disciplines. And uh, some are not in the, in the coherence because uh, I, I don't think, uh, I think uh, in Belgium we are not doing the same as uh, in Australia or, and so on, okay? But it doesn't matter. It was realistic experiment existing with their weak side and the good uh, innovative side. And it's what we have to implement now for how the strategy for uh, countries. And uh, I will, I promise that following this list, I will send you three things. The first thing is an article for the trends and uh, competency for the future. The second thing I will send you, it's the, uh, <laughs> the UNESCO 1989 conference recommendation, uh, four pages, no comment, okay? And the third thing is the beginning of the, <coughs> of the success story uh, operation for Birmingham in 1995. Please take some uh, <laughs> uh, back, because at that time you, we have not that, 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 and that. So it's a bit uh, old, but the content is not old. The technology is old, but the content is really with a pedagogical value and help people to say, oh, if they do that in Italy, I can do that also in Portugal and so on. And uh, how do you do that and so on? You see, it's very valuable. Yes. Um, um, we have uh, touched upon, upon many important topics, I think, uh, um, the question of, of uh, top-down and bottom-up and organic development, uh, 
the purpose of education and the moving uh, of, of education and uh, the curriculum and and uh, the learning materials uh, the the e-learning or blended e-learning the flip classroom uh, i would like to add one more dimension uh, and that's about the essence of education what is the essence of education it's communication and from my point of view um, the digital technology is a means of communication uh, that complement or supplement uh, the traditional uh, means uh, available for, for the teachers and the students. And that's why it's so important. When we ask teachers in Denmark uh, what is uh, important, they say it's not the learning materials. And the, the government have pr uh, spent many, many uh, millions of euros uh, supporting the, 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 the publishers. But according to the teachers, the most important of all is the sharing tools. That means they can share drafts, uh, recommendations, uh, answer to questions, etc. And and really, it's it's not an, it's more than an, an add-on. I would like to say, I agree, it's an add-on to to the curriculum. But in terms of the essence of education, it's more than an add-on. Uh, yeah. Um, there have been said a lot of very good things. Uh, one thing I would like to add is that uh, I think that uh, learning is should always be first. Uh, so technology can only be a, a, a feature, uh, but it's always the most important thing is always that that they, uh, that they have a good learning, a good teaching, and if you have a good process, then you can uh, implement some technologies to to make them better or to can better to communicate communicate with each other or to exchange things or something like that but the most the basic is always uh, always the learning it's always the most important thing yeah um, uh, yes I would like to add uh, a point on the uh, the openness uh, which is um, incredibly forgot to mention, but it's very important too. I mean, the, the communication, the sharing, etc. And there's uh, some important work that uh, we've been um, advocating and doing and also about open educational resources, which is, uh, I mean, so, I, uh, sorry, maybe I started a bit skeptical about ICT education because I wanted to also provoke some, uh, some discussion, but uh, uh, of course there are good things. I mean, uh, the MOOCs example, it's uh, of course something which is, uh, you know, uh, a demonstration that you can innovate uh, in, in doing things for adapting to the need. Uh, in this case, the, the, for example, the, the, uh, the fact that your, your number of students is uh, you know, increased in exponentially in a very little time. Uh, and open education resources is also uh, only possible thanks to uh, ICT, because uh, before ICT uh, was not even, uh, you know, you can do it, but it's not really possible to do it at the uh, a scale uh, or the level that uh, we, we are we are doing it now, uh, but these are all concepts which are which took time to uh, to 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 take uh, uh, place, and it took uh, maybe 20 years before uh, uh, last year there was the Second World Congress on on open educational resources, and uh, you know finally you have a ministerial statements that are acknowledging the fact that uh, this is uh, something uh, innovative and uh, which should be pursued. Before that, uh, the battle was against uh, copyright uh, problems and uh, you know, all these kind of uh, things. So it's a, a shift in the, uh, even the how you uh, think about uh, you, as, even as a teacher, eh? as, uh, as you uh, think about uh, sharing, which is uh, something which took time and uh, it was enabled only by technology at the same time they instilled some fear when I'm, I'm quite this is totally new I'm losing something because uh, of, of this new possibility which I don't really master so so well, I mean uh, it's uh, uh, it's complicated <laughs> uh, I think if you don't have to wait 20 years because if you are doing re really 
valorization of your colleague. You have maybe not 20 colleagues uh, doing uh, nice things or 100 or 200, but you have, okay? And if you valorize them by promoting the description of their success stories, okay? Then you have a phenomena that I have observed uh, in the 90s that if your son or your daughter is in a school not doing that, <laughs> you have, uh, you are in an epidemic way. You understand what I mean by that? That is, uh, I prefer that my, uh, my, my, my children are going to the primary school or to the, uh, where they are innovative, doing things and so on. And that is uh, something you can't avoid, okay? But you have to put in action and to uh, explain to the people. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much for the panelists. Thank you, Raymond, my co-chair. Thank you, David Storti from UNESCO, Brent Andresen from Denmark, and Stefan Lengle from the Danube University in Krems, Austria. Thank you for coming, and thank you for contributing, but your work is not finished. <laughs> I have this little box with my business cards, and I will give you I will give them to you, even they are very expensive prints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I spent this to remember you that you should send me your wish, your idea, which can, can be integrated in our document, which will be the outcome <laughs> and of this uh, session. And yeah, it will be our part of uh, helping the sustainability of, of the conference. <laughs>